So we use our go tool, pprof. What goes in here is the actual binary, which for us is the CPU task test, and then the actual uh, profile file that we outputted. Prof allows us to get the top functions that, that are running. You'll see that uh, since we only really have one, there's. Well, if you're running this on, say, like a cloud instance as opposed to your computer, would it look that much different since it would still have like the go path and all of that stuff and whatever? It should, it should look pretty, yeah, it should look okay. the same. This just represents the actual uh, uh, package. Mm -hmm. And that's what it'll look like on everything. And Go would require the package since Go path is required for running in general. Okay. Cool. Let's see if we can. Do just to show uh, the extent of time, we will do still sleep. Yeah, it's a little too long. We'll sleep, we'll sleep for a minute. We'll print out each one. When we're trying to benchmark a specific function, we'll use our uh, test.run to specify the exact test we want to run. We copy our function name, put in a run. We want to see the actual output. We'll use dash p for, 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 for both. So it's not doing anything, or it's just printing out zero a bunch of times? Well, one was a multiplication on zero. That's not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. So we'll let this run. Well, to a ridiculous number. Um, oh, now it went negative. That's awesome. So I've used basically think uh, if I say time tracking, mostly on like training times for machine learning models and stuff. Um, which technically are the opposite of high performance. They're like 12 hours later. Mm -hmm. Could you use these same tools on a situation like that? A little bit more difficult, just because the longer you run a profile, the more information it's going to have. The more information it has, the harder. Oh, run everything out in seconds, too. You don't want 12 hours in seconds. Gotcha. So usually you'd want to uh, profile a smaller, smaller chunks of it if you can. So we'd need a different tool set. Well, and in a bunch of our production API stuff, we just run pprof bun and like an HTTP. Okay. Thing, so you can just connect and get a profile while it's running. Yeah. And we will we will go over that. I like that. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so now let's take a look at our, at our profile.
that's my hoodie. Steve, you out. Oh, cool, it's a photo right now, too. enjoy using a tool uh, that was written by Dave Chen. Uh, I may not have it installed. Uh, from a GitHub repository package profile. Basically just a, a, a tool that wraps the uh, uh, those preprof functions. Just makes it a little bit a little bit easier. So we can start by uh, running profile to start and we'll select our profile function. So I want to make sure that we output it from the right place. So we profile the path. This is the actual uh, package profile. What is happening is our program is 
exiting. It's not having enough time to actually write the profile. Semi. So big. So what we're going to do instead of just calling this deferred, call stop ourselves. So just know if you ever run into that in your profile file, it seems small. It's most likely because it didn't finish writing that profile. So it will stop the program if it runs out of time without finishing the deferred of the right? Because yeah. the program will exit. And then if the, if the function that in the defer takes too long, then it will just stop it or exit it. It doesn't wait for that. Interesting. Disk is really slow for some reason. Well, I know the reason. This beginning profile. Does it define its own file? Can you give it a path? Does it require a path in the file? Yeah. yeah. So created this uh, CPU.pprof. Okay, so that is there. The our stop function. Sure. That doesn't work, we'll give up on the paper. Just use it directly. It's broken. It's just broken? Probably not. Let's try a different. Uh,
has writer in it. What's that? That one has the writer in it. Uh, I tried a different different solution here. Comes to something similar. But with this one, I actually makes an HTTP call. It does a few other things. Just to make it more significant. So you'll see here that uh, we have a list of all the functions and how long they took. And you can use this to actually determine what, what takes the longest. So you'll see that uh, CPU kind of flat run of 710 milliseconds compared to runtime.nano uh, run time, time, which took 100 milliseconds. And one uh, cool thing that they added in 1.10 to actually put this into a little UI. You can just do that by running a dash HTTP equals with the host and then the port. What this gives you, gives you the actual call graph, what's being ran, the path that it took to actually run it. See, the reason why uh, TakeCP took so long is because of all the calls that it made to time.sense and time.sense from, uh, from taking them calling one time to nano time. And this, uh, this call graph can get pretty, pretty complicated or pretty, pretty large. Even for this, the simple program that we have, it's, it's already pretty, you know, already has a lot of loops on it. Some other cool things with uh, this UI. The ability to see the flame graph. Have you guys heard of a flame graph before? The flame graph just allows you to basically see any hot paths that are being taken through your program. And so it actually displays like the, which one takes the, the longest. So it's, it's, it's basically sorted by time. So you'll see the, the root, which is just all of them, is the total runtime of the, of the program. And then the longest was already 800 milliseconds. So this gives you a good visual on how much takes CPU, how long that took compared to any of the other functions running with it. This is a really nifty tool. Peak just allows you to see some of the stack traces associated with functions. Top just gives you the, the same list that we were looking at before, just the top running uh, functions. Next thing we're going to talk about is a little more advanced. Um, it's it's actually giving the time it takes uh, for your uh, functions. And we can accomplish this by doing a web list dot, and this will actually give you or open up an HTML file that shows you how much each function took based on the function. So we'll see our our take CPU. It took a, a total of 800 milliseconds, it drilled it down to the time that since, that took this much time. You can even click into it to actually see the uh, assembly being called. So we'll see this uh, QDX CCX. 
was taking the longest as far as uh, what's in this function. And that's part of the PPROF package. We're running our same go tool, PPROF, and then uh, the binary in the profile that we created. You just do a web list that gives you, we'll open up this. Again, uh, the, this is a little more advanced. Most of the time you will have to drill down to the assembly to find out what is causing uh, your program to run slow. But it also gives you all the functions of the runtime library as well. So most of it you don't have to worry about. Should, uh, should sort of put the Functions that you're you're using right on the top. Then after lunch, we'll actually uh, debug or profile some larger applications, and then I'll show you a few more uh, tools. Um, like he was mentioning, the the net tool, which will allow us to actually. Uh, peek into a program that's currently running and we'll go over that but then we'll see uh, a few other see an actual program see the actual profile of the program it's large do you guys have any questions i know i went over that section a little bit fast Here's the, the test that was written to actually produce the profile that we were looking at. You like my gophers? Yeah. I stole them. <laughs> I didn't really steal them. Technically, it was illegal borrowing. So we can't take these. Yeah. But then we're no, stealing. Legal. They are Creative Commons license. Oh. Legal borrowing. There's massage chairs in a room that's hidden back there. First time on Friday. Been in the worker since January, and that's the first time you've used. They're them. all every time I go in that room, they're full. See that? Um, does Ryan also work here? Yep. Yeah. So did Q and uh, Q. Quentin Smith. He did Justin, what's his last name? He worked there for like three months, he said. Arantella. It's been before me. And uh, there's a couple people that work here. Uh, we had Pedro come speak at a meetup. Hi, Pedro. A couple of weeks ago, and we had him and Ulysses and uh, Jonathan, and there was somebody else from Rakuten that were here. So 
Besides Jonathan? Jonathan who? That's his name. Is something? Something. Last name. Oh, he's on he follows. Well, just give me a second to go stalk him on the internet and then I'll remember. Is his last name Buddy? Bundy? I will tell you. That's the only John I can think of that's previously worked. Oh. All of my all of the people I know for Rakuten besides you are previously. That makes sense. Stuck it out. Uh Morrison. Oh yeah, I know him. Dope. Yeah. I liked him. Uh, yeah, quite a few people came with Pedro Talk. He did a code review. No, when I talked about, um, uh, Review, uh, peer reviews, how it affects practices, and um, he did a he did like a light code review where he just wrote like horrible code and said review this. And so basically, we did three lines, and he's like, okay, stop there, don't waste your time reading it. And then he fixed the three lines, and then he did three more lines, like it's still broken. That one would have been good to go to. It was really good. I sometimes feel bad doing code reviews, like. I don't want to be too mean. Like, if the code works, it works. But it basically, says be mean. Yeah. It's their fault if they're offended. Yeah. I would... Well, well, I don't, I don't necessarily look at it like that. Okay, he did not <laughs> ever like give derogatory comments on the code. They were always positive comments. Yeah. But he wasn't shy about giving the right. comments. That, that is one thing. You can't be can't be shy about it. You have to. I mean, definitely don't be be mean. No derogatory comments. I'm sure people hate my code reviews in general. I don't get code reviews because I work on the project by myself. Uh, that can be bad. No, it's bad. Because of the first fellows. How much uh, code experience do you guys have? Like two and a half years. Do you know Kochava, the company? No. We work with you a little bit. Oh, okay. Also, like advertising stuff. Very nice. Probably not. Someone there. <laughs> been there for about four months since we year. Really enjoyed it. Uh, did you program very much actively for this? Um, I've worked at Sinclair Oil as a Salesforce developer for the last four years. Last year, we switched to Node on Heroku. I'm sorry. I get it. <laughs> it's nice and everything. We're doing TypeScript, so it's not as terribly. That is better. Problematic. But if you're using TypeScript, are you using React? So we don't have a front end per se, because what we're doing on Heroku is Heroku's owned by Salesforce. So they have a whitelist connection to the database. So we get Salesforce information on a Postgres database with a Node.js uh, API that I build because we kept running into problem after problem because Salesforce is retarded. Salesforce. Now, how long have you guys been working with Go? Oh, wow. JavaScript. So we were brainwashing him to come to the good side. Try. The good side of, of leave. Because everything else is Go. 
besides the JavaScript. <laughs> now, is that front end or back end for JavaScript? That front end. We're doing React and some old Angular. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Angular, Angular 1? Yeah, Angular whatever, yeah. the older version of it. It's all that fun dependency injection stuff. How are you doing back? How long have you guys been? Travis, Travis does DevOps at NAV. Oh. oh, very nice. So he knows everything about Kubernetes. I love Kubernetes. Which is written in Go, but he doesn't do <laughs> never actually program Go. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that conference, though, the Container Days one, that said it was in Hamburg? Uh -huh. You're going to Germany uh -huh. to go do give a workshop? And Nav's paying for it. Or are you no, paying for it? They're paying for it. They're paying for you to go? Yeah, you can go do a workshop for a conference. Yeah, so. yeah they definitely paid for it. <laughs> Dude, that's nice. You're flying me out to Germany to go teach a four hour lab. What's your, what is it about? What's it about? Um, it's uh, like building a secure pipeline using open source tools. So going from like code commit to stuff running in your production environment, having it like verified and secure the whole way Dude, I need to be cool enough to be paid to flown to other countries. I wish I was that cool. Um, I'm that cool. I'll probably be the other way. Depends on what we signed up for. Who are you? Well, you're giving a test run at the meetup, so you're going to get a test run of it. Yeah. At my meetup in an hour. Yeah, I'll run through it in an hour. <laughs> they said that the pizza is on its way, but it's store dash, so. Um. Because we don't believe in real pizza delivery men. We believe in DoorDash. No, I got an e message from somebody that's doing GoForCon Australia. They wanted me to send a CFP and see what happens, but we'll see. Usually people reject my offers to talk. I'm not cool enough, unless it's Open West. It's Open West. I talked to Open West and then it was a disaster. It was just bad. Talk about. Things I didn't go. Didn't I ever talk about. Hopefully, go to will add generic, so it makes your life easier. Yeah, but I don't know if it does. It would for scripting, for testing, right? If you just wanted to write a quick. What are you using Go for? Are you using it as part of a pipeline? If you're using it as part of a pipeline, then you want the data, the structure of a data. <laughs> structure changes slightly. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't matter to me, but it would be easier for people who are coming from Python over. I'd say the main reason that uh, off in machine, like in the data pipeline world is because it doesn't have generics. But the thing is though, if you look at most data pipeline services themselves, is they're written in Java with Python integrations, right? So they can write Python into it, but it's all built in Java. And Java, is, they use Java because of the data structure, data typing. Well, you're talking about the actual uh, programs are running. I'm talking, but yeah, not integrating to it or managing it. They like Python integrations for that. So. Right, Java or Go integrations with them. The only one that has Go is a Apache Beam. That's the only one that has a Go integration that I've seen. I've seen Go work with like uh, Spark. Yes, to every packages. I don't know. I've never seen that. That being said, 
I have no qualms of just using the Python on it. Sounds not bad. And here we are. Thank you for barely telling me. No, um, we're building out our own custom pipeline here because we just uh, we have custom needs. Ryan on that project? Ryan on that project? No, Ryan. Only one on that. That's so cool. Ryan was. I know, I don't know how to get So we're just playing this video. Oh, we're just playing this video. Go play on the stage. else I really like airflow or we tried flink for a second but flink and beam and spark and do for all the same things with different variations of the micro batching stream Blink is supposed to be pure stream, but they use yeah, they but use windowing instead of patching. So I probably not the same anymore. <laughs> but I did get a go. Um, the fact that it can uh, charts, but it didn't. But I did go backwards. Um, so they don't do a hard cutoff. If something's processing time and their event timer out of sync, it can go back and pull it forward to put it with the previous or the forward batch forward grouping, so. That's cool. Yeah. We tried it. <laughs> and then we realized all of our processing would have to be custom. If I'm going to do custom processing, I might as well do it and go and build my own pipeline as opposed to learn Java and do it in Flink. So. I'm pretty excited for good. Yeah, when they uh, announce the release date. I don't think they even know what they're doing yet. <laughs> no, they don't. They pretend like they do. That's how you work. release they're doing the new error wrapping stuff right in, in 1.13 i think so i don't think i've ever used like the errors package that lets you wrap errors i think that's going to be okay you're talking about the uh, errors uh, parentheses type out what you want the error to actually be this one is like some function errors dot wrap it takes a function and an explanation and you can wrap multiple errors and get back to the original cause. You're basically adding context. Yeah. So it's uh, it's are you talking about this package right here? The errors. errors. They're gonna I think they're building something like that in which will be nice. <laughs> context to errors. That would be very, very nice. Yeah, look at that. With upcoming go to error proposals, the packages will need to meet this other one. Why 
is like a slide count correlates to giving the weights that I published. <laughs> Slides are going to be a little bit dry because I just copied and pasted. They're on top of it. That's why I always use a Uber Eats. Use both. Treasury. 